Hello Facebook and YouTube. This is Jake Mace and this is my Urban Gardening in Arizona Facebook group and uh, hope you guys join me for this live episode today. I tried uploading one a few seconds ago and uh, didn't work out so hopefully this one works pretty well. If you guys are out there and you want to watch for about five or ten minutes I'll be doing about a five or ten minute live little video about my favorite ten fruit trees to plant in Arizona and other hot cities or hot climates. If you guys missed this feed live, you can check it out on my, um, my Vegan Athlete YouTube channel later on. This of course is my Urban Gardening Arizona Facebook page, so those of you watching live right now, please tell me in the comments or in the chat, is my audio and my video doing okay? And can you guys hear me and see me okay? Because I'm always uh, worried with this new technology that it's not showing up too well, so give me some feedback. And I'll try to get in there and answer any questions you have, so please comment below answer any questions or ask any questions you have, I'll try to answer them. And also if you guys can right now, if you can also hit the like button for me, hit one of those emoticons like the, the heart or the, the ha ha or the smiley face or the wow and uh, give me one of those likes and also share this video. We do these for free as usual. We don't ask any money for them so please um, help us by sharing the video because when you hit the share button it helps us out a lot. And let's see here, Rob is, uh, or excuse me, Bob is saying looks good, sounds good. Thanks Bob, thanks for the feedback. Thanks for watching too. So right here to start this video off with, this is one of my top 10 favorite fruit trees for the Phoenix area. And it's right below me. No, not the, not the loquat behind me. That's a, about a three year old loquat that fruited this year pretty nicely. And I got it from one of the big box stores uh, early in my gardening experience. And um, he's now, you know, 10 times bigger. He was in like a one gallon pot when I got him. And let's see here. Just posted to your group on some tomato seedlings, wrong time of year. Yeah, I would say tomato seedlings right now would be tough, but we have a, a season coming up. When the temperatures just fall out of 110, I would try to plant your tomato seedlings then. So right down here I got uh, this fig tree. This is number one on my top trees to plant in the Phoenix area. I'm going to take you guys down low, down low, we're going low. And if you guys can see inside here, we've got some nice looking figs, like on this branch right here. And see how they're all green right now. Those little fig fruits are all green, looking good. And the cool thing about it right now is that it's June in Phoenix, and it's hot, and the fig trees like the heat, so I'd recommend this, guys, for hot climates. If you come over here, you can see how once they start to get ripe, they turn from green to purple, like that one. Okay, so that one right there is almost ripe because if I squeeze them like that, sorry, buddy, I don't mean to give you a little bit of a checkup. <laughs> a little squeeze. He's uh, not quite soft enough yet to be ripe. Maybe like one or two more days. So those of you who are coming out to my uh, gardening tour this Saturday, there's still um, three more spots left if you want to get one of the last remaining spots. Hey, what's up, Mojo? Thanks for joining me. Um, you guys will see me eat this one on Saturday probably. If we go over here, I'll move you guys around this way. This one is ripe. If I bring the camera down this way here, you guys can see. There's that one. And that guy is really ripe and he is soft and looking good. So let me pick this guy off the tree here. Can you guys see that, that okay? There you go. Just a little twist, don't break the branches off and that's now the fig. So see they go from being green, like this guy is not ripe yet and he's green. And then they get significantly larger when they plump up and get purple. So this green guy right here will be purple in about a week or two and he'll be ripe as well. So, And they bleed like a white milky sap. That uh, milky sap is kind of the blood of the fig, see it drips out of there. That stuff's really sticky so don't get it on you. And if you guys um, check this out, I'll try to break it here on uh, camera with you guys. You can kind of pinch it and they should just kind of crack open. And then once they're open, they look like that. And I shared some figs in the last video as well. And those of you who have never had a fresh fig, you don't know what you're missing. They're really amazing. And you don't see them in stores because they're, uh, they go bad really quick. They're only ripe for a short amount of time. So let me guys show you how this tastes. Mmm, really delicious, my favorite thing, fresh figs. And a lot of times if you guys see a lot of Middle Eastern places, Iraqi places and Saudi Arabia places, they always grow figs. 
or any kind of like Middle Eastern grocery store always has figs because they grow in hot, dry climates. So take a lesson from the Middle East and plant the trees and the plants that they do because they're going to work here as well. So figs, definitely on my top 10 fruit trees for the Phoenix area. Now I'm distracted. I gotta eat this fig. And then, if any part of it's left over, just put it down in the roots of the tree and you can turn it into nutrients for the tree for later on. <laughs> okay. I was waiting to eat that one fig all day today just for you guys, so thanks for giving me an excuse to eat it with you. Now, numero dos, number two, is this guy behind me right here. And you guys who are growing this know what this guy is. With all these pods, the drumstick tree. And this drumstick tree, Mojo said my video cut off. I think it's still going pretty well here. I, I see that we got um, people watching and it looks like it's going okay. Let me know. Can you guys still hear me and see me okay? This is a moringa tree, and moringa is one that about three, four years ago, I had no idea what this tree was. I, know, I had no idea what moringa was, and really, I found that nobody did. And nowadays, if you go and look at my, go on YouTube and uh, the internet and <laughs> look up how to grow moringa, which I often do, I'm always trying to find information, guess who pops up first on the searches is your old man, Jake Mace. <laughs> so <laughs> it's scary to me when I have some of the highest rated videos on Moringa because I don't know what I'm doing necessarily. I'm just kind of a school of hard knocks kind of guy. But I've been doing Moringa for a few years now, so I do know a lot about them. Uh, this is called also called drumstick tree, and these guys are edible right now in their current state. You can actually shave them. When we were in Hawaii, we uh, saw these guys at a lot of the farmer's markets, and they would just shave the skin off, and they had them in a bundle like that for like five or ten bucks. And look at this branch right here. This entire branch is totally loaded with pods. Look at that. And the trees go up behind me. They go up really, really high up there. And they're pretty amazing stuff. They don't need water uh, after year two or two and a half in the ground. So I've been uh, not really watering these guys for the last uh, year and a half or so because they're now three and a half years old, almost, they'll be four years old, I think, this coming March. And now we're underneath the canopy of the Moringa. So check this out from the ground. You guys can see from down low, that's what the Moringa trunk looks like. This trunk, look at it, that's my head. I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm, I'm about six foot one, 200 pounds, and that Moringa trunk is pretty big, and this Moringa was a seed about three years ago, three and a half years ago, it was a seed. So that's pretty cool that now it's an enormous tree that I can actually swing from and do pull-ups from, and that's one of them. Over here's another one. You guys can see this guy, he's up pretty big. And over here's another one, this guy's a big boy too. And if you guys wanna see the amount of pods this guy's putting off, check this out, I'll go kind of like into the pods and if you guys look up top there, behind me, look at how many pods are hanging there and if I spin a little, maybe I spin Javi better. If I spin there, look at how many pods are right there behind me. So those will all be seeds this coming fall when the green pod turns brown, we'll harvest the seeds and we can distribute them to people in the valley so we can get these trees out there because the leaves of these trees are highly nutritious and edible. So if you guys were to look right here, I got this leaf and that's the edible part right there. So you can eat that. And it tastes like a healthy green, like a really healthy kale. So there you go, another one, moringa and fig. I also love any kind of citrus because citrus, oranges, grapefruits, uh, they kind of count as one tree for me because they're, they stay ripe on the tree for a long, long time. You can uh, have your citrus starting to be ripe in like October and it will stay ripe on the tree till March, April sometimes. So pretty good one. So citrus is number three in there. And if we go back over here, this is number four. This is the uh, Chinese date tree or the jujube. Jujube. <laughs> jujube, whatever you say it. Uh, Chinese date. And look how mine's loaded with fruits there. Oh, Steve, you're in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. That's pretty cool, man. And Alicia Eric Delgado. My good friend here in Phoenix is Eric Delgado, but you're not the same Eric, I don't think. So that's pretty cool that you have the same name as my friend. Is anyone trying to go jackfruit? Daniel, good luck. <laughs> Move to Hawaii is what I would say. Move to Mexico. 
<laughs> move to the to the tropics because jackfruit is um, tough to do because it can't take the winters here. It's too cold here in the wintertime. But uh, this tree, the jujube, is pretty tough and uh, fruits a lot. So if you guys see these fruits look kind of like apples right now, see that? They look kind of like little apples. I'm going to pick one for you guys right now that's green. Check this out. And my lip got a little damaged. My bottom lip got a little damaged in the Grand Canyon. I hiked uh, 40 miles. Just got back a couple days ago. I was uh, gone for four days in the Grand Canyon. And the lovely people over there at uh, Greenie's Garden, if you guys look up Greenie's Garden on YouTube, they uh, took care of my place for me and it looks great. Um, so I got a little too much uh, sun damage in my lip there. But this is uh, the jujube when it's green and listen to how crunchy it is. Crunchy. On the inside, it looks like an apple, but it's not an apple. It doesn't taste like an apple. It tastes kind of like a like a dry apple, but dry in a good way, not in a bad way. It's kind of sweet. I'm gonna go over here, maybe I'll get better signal. Normally, hopefully the audio and video is still okay here. You guys, let me know if you guys are watching me eat the jujube right now. Is my audio and video still synced up? If it is, I'll keep going. If it's not, I'll restart the live feed into a better quality connection here. Let me know. Give me feedback of how I'm doing here as we're going along. If you guys want these guys to be delicious, what you do is you let them dehydrate on the, the tree. So I would say in about two months from now, the green jujube like this will dehydrate down into a shriveled up red looking date. And that's when you want to eat it, when it's a red date like uh, like fruit. Okay, then it's chewy and delicious and they keep for like a year. They're like really good for storage. So jujube is definitely number four in there. Really amazing stuff. So how are we doing? Is that, is that four? We got the figs, number one. Moringa, number two. We got the uh, any kind of citrus, number three. And we got the jujube, number four. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys into the back and show you guys another one that I like. So I finished this jujube. And again, if you guys are watching right now, hey, thanks Derek for the feedback. Thanks Renee. Patricia, yes. And you could take this into a theater and watch it in the movie. Maybe I'll take some jujubes to watch Independence Day when it comes out here tomorrow. Ooh. The pit in the middle. Mulch. Okay, so my front yard, my front yard has about 25 or 30 fruit trees in it. But of those 25 or 35, only those four are my favorites. I'm really starting to get into trees that will work for sure here in the Phoenix area, okay? So I'm only gonna give you guys trees that will definitely work in the Phoenix area. And it's getting kind of dark on me, so I'm gonna kind of go pretty quick here. Let me uh, just go to the backyard here. <laughs> and we'll finish this out in the back. Bear with me for a couple seconds. Kevin cannot get his Moringa to grow. Can you guys out there in uh, Facebook, YouTube land, can you guys give Kevin some tips on growing his Moringa? What I found is that the Moringa, the only events, the only thing I can find at first when I first started growing Moringa was that they needed a sandy soil. They wanted a sandy soil. So I added a little bit more sand to the soil when I planted them and I had to shade them for the first like two weeks when I put them in the ground. I planted them in like April or May and they weren't used to that much sun yet. After two weeks, we took the shade away and they've been great ever since. And actually I just began to uh, grow a few in my backyard here on the western wall of my house. And one of them is right here next to me right here. I showed you guys in the last live feed. And this one is about a four month old Moringa tree from seed. So that guy was a seed about four months ago. And now he's probably about, uh, I would say, eight feet tall. And just today he started putting off his first flowers right here in the middle. He's got some flowers going on inside there, on that branch right there. Okay, so number five, I would say you guys gotta plant if you're in a hot climate is date palms. I wish, to whatever God that you guys worship, I wish that I would have planted date palms the first week I lived at my house here because uh, they do take a while to grow. So if you guys find some that are mature, that's a great thing. So this guy right here is a date palm. 
And this is a female fruiting date palm that uh, is one of about 15 female fruiting date palms I have here at my house. And this guy will fruit next year. He's the right size to fruit next year. And I really believe in these guys. And if you guys can find somebody with a delicious female fruiting date pup, get it and plant it. And you guys, if we're in the Phoenix area, I'm telling you guys, in Iraq, in Oman, they're growing date palms, man. Anybody who's Middle Eastern loves the date palm. The date is an ancient, ancient human food source. Ancient. If you guys don't like dates, grow up. <laughs> Start liking them because they're amazing. They taste sweet and every single variety of date has a different taste to it. Those people who are vegan and those people who are into raw veganism, they love dates because you can use them in smoothies and desserts and like energy bars and breads and eat them raw and you can put them in the freezer and they'll store for years. And uh, they really are an amazing fruit. So definitely plant your date palms. Another one is right here behind me right here. This guy's a nice looking one. Just a very artistic looking date palm right there. Looks really good. You guys can see that guy. And uh, they'll live for, you know, 100 plus years and they'll put off dates the entire time. Plus the cool thing is that when you plant them when they're in that stage, like that guy, for the first, you know, 10, 15, 20 years that she's fruiting, the fruit will be within arm's reach. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that'll be cool. Okay, next on our list is gonna be female fruiting mulberry. This is number six. So female fruiting mulberry is next. There are many different varieties of this kind of tree. The male mulberries are the ones that everyone gets upset about for allergies because they put pollen in the air. But the female ones have nothing to do with pollen. So if you guys can get some female fruiting mulberries, you will be a great citizen of your area because you'll be producing food for you and your family in your neighborhood and you will not be contributing to any of the allergens because the, the female mulberry keeps the fruit on the tree and it becomes delicious, uh, nutrient dense superfood that's high in antioxidants. So this is one, this guy is incredible. Look at the size of this tree behind me. See that guy right there? That's a huge tree and that guy was in a, uh, like a two gallon pot. I got him for $15 from Seamus O'Leary back in the day. I think it was just before Seamus and I were, uh, were friends. We were just kind of like business associates. I would buy trees from him, he would sell trees to me. <laughs> okay, so, and this tree was in the corner of Seamus O'Leary's and I'm like, Seamus, can I take this tree? He goes, yeah, just give me 15 bucks. I was like, okay, cool. And boom, it's a huge specimen. And this is the most productive variety of mulberry I got from Seamus called a uh, Peruvian. So I recommend Peruvian mulberry. Now, mulberries ripen on the tree very, very quick. Let me guys tell you guys something really quick. Let's have a heart to heart. Okay, let's come on down here nice and low. A little one-on-one -on -one with you and Jake Mays. Uh, when you guys go to the store to buy your food from the store, I'm telling you, the store and these companies have no um, interest in helping your health. Nothing. They're only selling you bananas and apples and oranges to make a profit. So they don't give a crap about what the quality of the fruit is. All they want is to sell it to you and so it's barely good enough that you won't return it. And the oranges that you see in the store are always just one variety. The bananas, one variety. The Cavendish. The apples, just usually just a couple varieties, you know. And um, Red Delicious, Green Delicious, Fuji, Anna, you know what I mean? So. The reason why those fruits are in the store is because they ship well. And they usually are able to store on the shelf for a little bit longer period of time. So if you guys want real nutrients that'll feed your vegan athlete body and make you an ancient kind of human, you know, like a caveman style of human in terms of health and physique, but a modern day human in terms of intellect and modern humanity, you gotta grow it yourself. You gotta put worm castings and rock dust powder in the soil. You guys can get a $10 bag of uh, rock dust powder from me at jakemace.com to try it out. Uh, put some mycorrhiza in there. And we also have the mycorrhiza at jakemace.com. And boom, you're good to go with good compost. And uh, that's good for gardening. And then do that mix as well with a little bit of native soil added in there for the trees. Because when you do that, you're mineralizing your food and you're able to grow rare fruits that only stay ripe for a very short period of time, which is fine for you because you'll eat it right away. That's Pepper over there. Say hi to Pepper in the comments. She's my oldest dog. She's like 10. I think she's a little bit mentally challenged. So we just, uh, 
we are giving Pepper a good home. But she's not a dog that I've always loved, but she's just a dog that's always been with me. Um, so, what I would say is grow the food yourself because when you eat the food that's in from your yard, you're eating it when it's ripe, you're eating it right away, and when you eat it right away, it's infinitely more nutritious, and you're able to grow rare varieties of foods that the stores don't carry because they can't. Trader Joe's barely can carry figs. Whole Foods can barely carry figs because they go bad in like a day. And uh, we can grow figs on our fig tree because I have six different varieties of figs that all ripen at different times. Okay, so number seven is pomegranate. This is also a great tree for the Phoenix area. Usually pomegranate ripens about the time of oranges. And I had somebody today on the Facebook group, maybe it's you watching, I don't mean to make fun of you, but somebody, was, somebody had a pomegranate in their house and they were saying, they, were, they said, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's a pomegranate, or in Canada they call it a grenade, or in uh, Espanol they call that granadas. And uh, granadas is a really good fruit that is full of red jewels on the inside that are so nutritious, amazing stuff. Uh, and usually ripens in about November when the oranges do. So that's my pomegranate I bought four years ago from Gardener's World, which is now out of business. And it's an angel red looking really big. And my tortoise, Leo, uses it as shade in the daytime. Guys, is that seven? Seven trees so far? Let me look around. I gotta look around here for the next Okay, next one. Okay, here we go. Palo Verde, number eight. Mesquite, number nine. Ironwood, number 10. Okay, boom, there you go. There's your 10. The reason why you've got to plant a Palo Verde, and I would recommend planting this kind, a Florida blue Palo Verde. If you guys go to my vegan athlete YouTube channel, youtube.com slash vegan athlete, I ate a bunch of the pods off this guy about a month ago when they were ripe, and now they're seeds, and they're too hard to, to eat raw, but a month ago they were green and delicious like sugar snap peas. You just eat the inside, not the outside, and they're like uh, edamame at a sushi restaurant. And that tree right there is pretty big, and that guy was $7 in a one gallon pot at the uh, Desert Botanical Gardens plant sale about three years ago. And I probably watered him about three times in my entire life because he just exists off native rain. So a great food source for the area, great shade source, quick growing tree, keep him trimmed or else when they get big enough, the monsoon will take him down. Next one is mesquite because mesquite, I'll show you guys the mesquite, check it out. I've been dodging mesquite pods all day because they're starting to get ripe. And uh, my dogs love it when mesquite season's in, uh, when the time of year is for mesquites because they eat all the mesquite pods off the ground like dog biscuits. It's getting kind of dark on me here. Let me uh, grab some of these guys. So see guys, this is one of my mesquites above me. Big, big shade tree. All that up there is mesquite. If you go down on the ground right here, they're just riddled all over the ground. And the mesquite pods look yellow like this. See that? That's what the pods look like. And there's also different varieties of mesquite. Okay, and if you guys go and check out my man uh, from Tucson, he's friends with Greg Peterson. He's a, uh, his name is Brad Lancaster. I never met him. I hope one day I can meet him and do a video with him and uh, get some of his knowledge. But he's got some great videos out there on the power of mesquite. So the native peoples in the Phoenix area, this is one of their most important food sources and we've forgotten nowadays. You can grind this into a flour better than any flour you're ever gonna eat because it's sweet. So I can take these mesquite pods right now and I can eat them. I just kind of chew them and boom, it's sweet. It's really good. But then some of the fiber remains, so I spit the fiber out. So I just kind of walk around, eat a mesquite, suck it out, suck the seed out, and then you got the seeds like that that I'll just spit on the ground with mulch. There you go. Now it's nice and sweet, kind of good. And my dogs love it. My dogs eat it like, like candy. That's why Tesla over there is so fat. <laughs> That's the pit bull I rescued from the pound. One and a half year old pit bull. And um, she's, she's crazy mean. Like she'll snap at any moment and kill all the babies in sight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's the most nice and warm-hearted dog of all time. So if you guys are part of the crowd that believes that pit bulls are bad, I gotta, I gotta fight you in some martial art tournament because uh, they're not bad. It's the humans that dictate the, the personality of the dog. I've met some really horrible golden retrievers and chihuahuas, but this pit bull is great. 
and Venus is the rescued uh, cattle dog, and Pepper is the the special one because <laughs> she was starving in the in the forest and we found her, and I think that she got some brain damage from the um, time that she was out in the forest. And somewhere out here, there's Supai. Watch, Supai, come here, Supai. Watch behind there. Watch him. Here he comes. There he goes. <laughs> He's the only boy dog. Supai, come here. He's also a kettle dog and he's blue, blue healer. So we rescue all the dogs. And they want to be fed right now, so they think it's food time. So definitely plant yourself a mesquite because there's different varieties. There's corkscrew, there's Chilean, there's honey. And uh, you guys can, if you ever are in an area that has mesquite pods dropping from the trees, taste one and see if they taste okay. Chew it up and suck the seed out and kind of get the juices flowing. And it's kind of sweet on the inside, really good stuff. And then ironwood. Uh, last thing that we'll go for the day. The ironwood over here is a really good so um, choice for the Phoenix area because it's a native. They can live for a thousand years. And if you guys are over at the Desert Botanical Garden like around March, don't tell them I said to do this, don't tell them anything. But just go there when it's flowering, eat the flowers off the tree in about March, maybe March, April. You can pick the flowers off and eat them and they're really delicious. They're like kind of a little bit floral and sweet tasting. Then they'll turn into seed pods that are edible. The inside seed is green and edible like a edamame. So, and then of course also I would say guava would be a good choice for Phoenix area. Any kind of guava. If you guys, uh, yeah, you guys uh, who are hitting like right now in the heart, keep hitting that stuff. I'm doing the live feed. What I see right now is I see hearts and like symbols and the wow faces and the ha ha's all going across the screen. So I love that. It feeds my energy. So. I'm feeling a little bit down today, so I'm uh, trying to. I'm gonna go work after this and do a little bit of a workout and uh, get some really healthy vegan dinner because it helps make me feel better. So yeah, all those likes and hearts and smiley faces going across the screen right now lift my mood up and me feel a little bit better. I would say guava as well because guava can take the heat pretty well, um, and I'm also growing a lot of grapes and dragon fruit. I got about uh, I would say 20 different dragon fruit cactus planted here. And so I really recommend those, pretty much those tw uh, uh, 13 things. Let's recap. Fig, jujube, moringa, uh, we've got the mulberry, date, we've got palo verde, ironwood, mesquite, that's eight, pomegranate, the granadas, that's nine, and help me out guys, what was the, what was the tenth one? I said it earlier, 10th one was, uh, oh, I'm looking around, oh, it was citrus, any kind of citrus. Other good ones I like are guava, uh, grape, and dragon fruit. And what also does really, really well is pecan. This is my baby pecan tree, my wife's favorite tree in the yard, and this guy was a stick when we planted him, and now he's a pretty big tree, and pecan does really well here as well, but it does need a lot of water, so. There's my 14 things that I would recommend. If you guys were looking for some trees to put in your yard, pick one of those 14 and go for it. Mulch it incredibly like um, we have here. If you guys look down, everywhere you go in my yard, there's full of wood chips and mulch. Okay, get that stuff. I get it for free and you guys can too. So I'll see you guys at the Vegan Athlete YouTube channel. Please check out my videos on YouTube. Go there right now. The link is in the description down below. If you want one of the final three spots of my private gardening event, usually like 100 people come to these gardening events that I host uh, because they find out about it from our uh, online uh, stuff we have out there, YouTube and Facebook. So I wanted to limit this one to just 25 people. 22 have already signed up and there's three more spots available. Once it's filled, then I will be uh, taking the link away. So if the link is available, you can still sign up. And it's this Saturday from eight to 10. Bring video, bring a hat, bring closed toed shoes, like tennis shoes is good, bring water. We'll have some refreshments out and all that jazz and uh, we'll talk for two hours about everything to do with growing your food at home. Listen guys, as I close out tonight, listen to this. It's very powerful to grow your food at home. Very powerful. For those of you who are able to do something in life that you love, and that allows you to set your own hours, you're the rarity. Okay, that's cool, you made it. But for most people in the world, they're you know, still suffering. The economy's still not very good, and there's a lot of stuff going on right now that um, could make it very tumultuous in the future. So I'm always an advocate of investing. But I don't invest like you're thinking. I don't invest in like the stock market. I think that's like gambling. And when I go to Las Vegas, I go to Vegas to watch a Cirque du Soleil show, or to watch the Bellagio fountains, or to go to an event. I don't go to gamble because that's just a waste of money. 
and I don't want to gamble on the stock market either. So what I do is I invest in things like myself, like my home, like um, getting rid of my debt, okay, like mortgage debt and car debt and things like that. I try to invest in getting um, my food growing in my front and backyard because every time I can knock off 20 more dollars, 100 more dollars, 1,000 more dollars off my food bill by growing delicious fruits in my yard, that saves me money and then I don't have to work as much. What I'm really finding lately is that if you guys grow a significant amount of food in your yard, like that's a fruiting female carob tree. Uh, like over here I have a, an apple tree. Right in here I just can pick apples. <laughs> this is my apple tree. My Ein Shamer. I can eat fresh apples right off the tree. This is why my skin looks healthier, my muscles can repair themselves better after a good workout. I can hike 40 miles in the Grand Canyon and be fine the next day. Um, I just think that eating the food out of your yard is a great way to live. Plus, it saves you money. When you're producing a large amount of food in your front and your backyard, you will find that you seriously will not have to work as hard anymore. You can actually put in 25 hours a week instead of 40 because you're able to cut down that budget a lot because all your food now, at least all your produce, maybe your flour if you plant the mesquite trees, is providing your front and backyard. But you gotta become a real urban farmer, not just an urban farm enthusiast. You gotta go out there and sweat. You gotta go out there and get black hands with compost. You gotta go out there and have some backyard chickens and you gotta go out there and change your plants according to the seasons. Grow fruit trees with garden. So that's why I say those date palms right now are very important because dates, because one date palm, like these two guys behind me are new ones. The two date palms right there. One date palm when it's producing dates can produce 200 to 300 pounds of dates a year. Dude, if you have 10 date palms, that's 2,000 to 3,000 pounds of dates a year. That's a lot of food, okay? Pam and I right now are investing in a um, a second freezer, an industrial freezer, that we're gonna keep loaded with all the food from our yard so we can have food year round frozen in the freezer. That's a good investment, okay? Another good investment is mulch, soil, more fruit trees. Another good investment is your water bill because every time that I, my water bill increases a little bit, my food budget drops a lot and so it's a net savings for me. And if you're eating plant-based food, it's infinitely less harm on the planet in terms of water consumption than a meat-based diet. Okay, really quick, I, I'm getting sidetracked here. See this thing? I took a bite of that apple right in front of you guys, literally two minutes ago. It's already brown. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna hit the screen so it kind of clears it up. Okay, it's already brown. Have you guys seen the stories, the articles lately about the GMO apples that they're producing? They're changing the genes of the apple in order to make it so it doesn't go brown. Okay, does anybody else think this is a not a good idea? <laughs> if you guys think this is not a good idea, hit the like button right now. Give me some likes, give me some smiley faces, give me some hearts. I wanna see hearts going across the street. Hearts, more hearts, more hearts. Let's go, I'm waiting, let's see it. <laughs> Apples are supposed to turn brown. If, you, if you're changing the genes of a fruit, to make it do something, there's gonna be a side effect somewhere, and these scientists who are really smart, they can't predict what the side effect will be. Okay, who knows what it's gonna be? I want my apples to turn brown. Wasn't there a Janis Joplin song back in the day about paving paradise and put up a parking lot? Is that Janis Joplin or somebody else? Put it in the comments, who sings that song? They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. In the song, she says, I want spots on my apples and please save the birds and the bees. Is that what they say in the song? Anyways, we've been fighting this for a long time. That's what apples should do. And it should stay white when it's new, brown when it's been in the air. This means that my apple is very nutritious. And yes, my apples are so nutritious, I can eat every part of the apple, even the seeds. The last live video 
I ate a spicy chota bean pepper and it was too spicy. This is much, much better. I'm gonna cut it off right there. It's getting dark on me. I gotta go work out. I love you guys. Share the love with me. Give me some of that heart and like. Share this video. Check out my YouTube channel tonight for new videos. And um, tell all your friends about the Irving Garden and Arizona Facebook group and go out in your yard right now and pick some apples and some grapes. They're in season and they're delicious. I love you guys. Go vegan and grow that food at home. And I'll see y'all back here next time. I'm gonna go right now and um, I'll read all the comments on my computer really quick for five minutes and I'll try to comment and hit the like button on your comments so you know I saw it and I'll respond to your questions. So put a question or comment down there. Thanks guys. Hasta la vista. Hasta mañana. Zai Jian, Ming Tian Jian.